as well as the birthday of the Alter Rebbe of Lubavitch and Shnei Zalman of Liadi. And we're sitting here, I'm in the Kohen section, right here by the, by the grave of Rabbi, of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, of the Baal Shem Tov's great-grandson, after a, a really beautiful and powerful trip. And um, there's something in the air that words can never come close to describing, no matter what we would try to do. There's no way in the world we could ever verbalize the Rikshe Halev, the opening of the heart, and the dreams, and the living in the moment that's taking place while we're here. But uh, we figured that it couldn't be more magical time to share one thought, because when you're by the Tzaddik's grave, in the area where he was buried, to learn his teachings, the Tzaddik can explain us that it causes their, we have a phrase that says, Siftotehem medolevot bakever, it's like their lips are moving in their grave. That's true wherever you learn the tzaddik's teachings. How much more so is that true when you learn their teachings by their grave site? So there's something that I've been thinking about. I heard this story a few years ago and it had the most incredible impact on me. Rabbi Shlomo Karlbach, when he was, when he was still working for the Lubavitcher Rebbe, one day he came back from, it must have been I guess Columbia University when he was out doing his thing. And he came to the Rebbe and he asked him, he said, Rebbe, how do I know if what I'm doing really works? How, much, how, how do I know how much it's actually influencing me? How do I know what kind of change I'm really causing in people? Like, I understand that while the interaction's happening, whether it's a, back then it was in concerts, but whatever the gathering was, while it's happening, I know there's interaction, there's hit oreru talev, there's an awakening of the heart. But how do I know what happens once they go home? Is there any real effect in their life? Does anything actually happen? And the Rebbe answered him such an important answer, which I think is a very important answer for any educator, for any teacher, but not just for formal teachers or, or rabbinic students or rabbis that have rabbinic ordination. It has to do with anyone who finds himself playing the role of inspirer, a teacher in the moment. And that's you and me and anyone in the world because Today, everyone is so hungry. And we're constantly finding ourselves in places and in moments of giving people inspiration and teaching them, sharing with them holy thoughts. So when the Rebbe said to Reb Shlomo, it's not for you to know, I always thought that meant that don't worry about that. As long as you try hard enough, it's up to God how, what the fu you know, eventual results will be, how much their lives are changed on that. But here, as we're sitting here by the, by the gravesite of Rabbi Nachman, we're opening up Sikha Salam, Rabbi Nachman's wisdom, it's the 99th teaching in Sikha Salam. And Rabbi Nachman brings a concept that sheds new light on what we just spoke about right now. There's a concept called Or Yashar and Or Chozer. Or Yashar is straight light, and Or Chozer means a, 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 almost like a boomerang light, like a light that comes back to you. And the Rebbe says here, Rabbi Nachman says, When a person is speaking with his friend matters of Yirat Shamaim, he's speaking words of Torah, he's speaking words of heaven, of fear of heaven. These two forms of light, of sending out light and another light that comes back to you, are being formed. Like when I'm sharing with you, so something's happening and a light is being formed your direction. Then, something happens that comes back to me as well. We're saying all oh, this, this is just a nutshell. Maybe because it's just very late, maybe because to say these words next to Rabbi Nachman's grave and think that you understand it is a pretty freaky and wild assumption as well. But I'm just being as real as I can get right now. Sorry, it's what you have. So Rabbi Nachman says, what happens 
when you're trying to inspire someone, or you're sharing words of Torah and someone, and they're not getting it. Rabbi Nachman says, what happened when a person has a moach katan, a small, a small mind, a constricted intellect? Does that mean that nothing happened because they didn't chap what you're trying to say? And therefore the whole thing was kind of like lashav for nothing? So Rabbi Nachman says, it's an incredible concept. The or choser, the boomerang light that comes back and shines onto you, was in the merit of the person that's standing in front of you, whether he realizes what you're understand, trying to say or not. It's irrelevant. And in fact, it's the power of this person, who's supposedly supposed to receive light from you, his role that he plays is very interesting. Just the fact that he exists enabled a boomerang light to come and shine in your life. For, in other words, when we teach words of Torah, it's not only about the person we're trying to inspire. There's always something that happens to us, and any teacher knows this, that when you work hard on trying to educate and trying to share an idea, and trying to share some light, a concept of Torah, and you work really hard on not just understanding, but articulating that which you just learned, something happens to you. All teachers say that they learn so much better when they teach and they work hard on understanding that which they're about to teach, when they do the work on understanding it. So this Or Choser comes back to the person that gives out words. Rabbi Nachman says the person can be like a wall. He can mamish be like a brick wall, not receiving anything, not understanding anything you're trying to say. But the fact that he caused you to verbalize and say words, what a schut that, that, that person has, whether he understands what you're saying or not. Just his existence caused you to work hard on trying to understand what you're trying to say. We've had a concept we've spoken about many, many times, is that so many of us are spiritually, I don't want to say the word we usually use, not that it's a bad word, it's not for now, but we're spiritually congested. We have a lot going on in here. We learn a lot of different things, we experience a lot of different things, we see a lot of different things. But for it to come out and be verbalized and expressed is sometimes like as hard as you see as Mitzrayim. Can anyone truly sh like, explain what happens to their heart when they're touched by the Ribbon Shleim? When they're touched by certain words? Can anyone explain? Do you understand what it means? To be able to verbalize and express what it is? So therefore, when you have a precious moment where you're able to articulate that which you learned, that which your heart feels, that's a great, tremendous thing. It's an amazing concept. So therefore, Rabbi Nachman says, don't get caught up on what the person understands or doesn't understand with what you're trying to teach them. Because it could be that it's just about you. And it could be that this boomerang light that's coming back onto you has nothing to do with the comprehension of whatever the person's understanding. So maybe like when the Rebbe told Reb Shlomo, it's not for you to know, I could, and now we're doing a little like, it's kashrut of all the tzaddikim, bringing all the different tzaddikim together right now, because Bezrat Hashem, they're all in Shemayim, they're all together, so why shouldn't they be done together in this world as well? It's no machlok, it's better tzaddikim. So maybe what the Rebbe meant when he told Reb Shlomo, it's not for you to know how much you transform them, is because, yeah, it's up to the Rebbe Nishleil how much he enables people's hearts to be opened and touched and transformed. But further, it's not for you to know because maybe it's about you. Maybe it's about how much are you touched by what you just said. And alavai, please God, every educator, every teacher, in any shape, in any way or form, however they find themselves as an inspirer or a teacher, that every person, when they open up their mouth to share something important and heilig and holy, the or choser, the returning light, comes back to them like a boomerang, whether the person understands what they said or not. And they realize what a privilege it is to be mefaresh maisicha, to explain what's going on in my heart and what I'm doing right now. And you can see this specifically here, where we are right now, in this very special place, that learning this Torah next to the bones of the, of the person who said this teaching should be a zgula for all of us to never ever give up on fulfilling that role of being an inspirer and to never ever find ourselves in moments where you feel like inspiration is impossible because Rabbi Nachman says 
when a person has an Israelite heart, meaning when he's aware and conscious of the Jewish heart that he was created with, it wasn't his choice, it was given to him. Reb Nachman says there's no such thing as an excuse to not be a servant of God in any place in the world. En shum makom sheimanel. There's no, there's no such thing. Why? Because when a person is walking the streets of the world with the consciousness and the awareness of his Levi Israeli, Reb Nachman says, "Kol hamekomot shel kol haolam shelohem." Every place in the world becomes your place. Every single place in the world becomes your place. Every moment that seems impossible to bring light into, the second I zone out and actually zone in to what's really the Emma's, that place becomes my, that's my place right now. I can do whatever my heart desires to do in the world of Gdusha, in any place that I find myself. So it shouldn't be too hard to feel inspired, but if you have a hard time feeling inspired, remember, Remember that which you didn't choose. I didn't choose to have an Israelite heart. I, do, I didn't choose, so as far as I know, I didn't choose to be born a Yid. I didn't choose this. This was given to me. And when I remember that, that means there's a much bigger program going on. There's a much bigger play that's taking place. And please God, I should feel so humbled and happy and privileged and blessed to play my part. Bismillah with utmost happiness.